Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is day four of CU Info Week, and this is our very first presentation of day four. My name is Emily, and I am a recruitment officer here at Carleton, and I'm also a proud graduate from the criminology program. I graduated back in 2018, so almost three years ago now, and I am very excited to be here talking to you today. A little bit about Carleton, but a lot more focus on what you can do with your degree. So some of you may know exactly what it is you want to do. You might know what that end goal is, but maybe you don't know exactly how to get there or you don't know what that path is going to look like. On the other hand, some of you may be tuning in and maybe you know exactly what it is you're passionate about. You know what you want to study, but you don't necessarily know where it's going to lead you to. So I'm here to talk about all of those uh, burning questions that you might have and to show you and to tell you about a lot of opportunities that are available to you as a future Carleton student. Before I begin the presentation, I just want to start off with our land acknowledgement. So Carleton University acknowledges the location of its campus on the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. And we always start off our presentations with this acknowledgement out of respect for our Indigenous communities. Now, for those of you who have never seen our campus or who have never been to uh, Carleton's campus, this is a snapshot of our physical location. So um, as you can see, we have some beautiful borders around our campus. Rideau River on one side, and then we have the Rideau Canal on another side. And then the campus itself is really nicely laid out. So I like to think of it as divided into three different sections. We have our academic buildings all in one area, and then we have all of our residence buildings in another area and then all of our athletic facilities in another area of the campus. And that makes it very nice and easy to navigate. Um, you know, you always know where you're going. Once you're in the at that academic area, you're not having to go too far from class to class. And then one of my favorite things about Carleton's physical uh, campus is something that you can't see in this picture, but it's our underground tunnel system. Um, so that means that every single building at Carleton is connected through underground tunnels, which makes it super nice in the winter when it's minus 30 degrees and it's snowing or hailing or raining. But it's also something that we're very proud of because it, it's what makes us one of the most accessible universities in Canada. Now, some of you may have already applied. Maybe you've already done your research and you know all about Carleton's faculties and all of the programs that we have to offer, but I'll give you a brief overview right now. So at Carleton, we have five academic faculties, as you can see right here. We have public affairs, science, uh, our school of business, engineering and design, and arts and social sciences. Now, across these five faculties, we have 22 different degree programs, and all of our programs are very multidisciplinary and they're interdisciplinary, which means that when you're looking at something or, or when you're studying an area, you're looking at it from a bunch of different lenses. Uh, we also offer a lot of experiential learning opportunities, meaning that our students aren't necessarily just sitting inside the classroom, but we like to get our students out into the real world and giving them opportunities so that they can have some hands on learning as well. Now, if you want to do a deep dive and learn uh, even more about all of our programs, I invite you to come check out our general presentation tomorrow at 2 p.m. given by my wonderful colleague Jalil. He's going to be doing a deeper dive into all of our programs and talking a little bit more about those opportunities. And if you can't make it to that program, but you want to learn more about our programs, uh, you can go to our website, which is admissions.carleton.ca. And you can go into the videos and there's a whole section uh, of, of past recordings and videos where you can do a deeper dive and learn about the specific program it is that you are interested in. Now I want to talk a little bit about what our alumni are doing. So this is what I want to I want to highlight here that um, people have different paths and you know everyone's path looks a little bit different and that is totally OK. So someone who you may have heard of, in fact, you probably have heard of him, uh, is James Duthie. And James Duthie is a uh, sportscaster on TSN and he is a Carleton graduate. So he studied journalism at Carleton and uh, now he's working in that field as a Canadian sportscaster. Another graduate from Carleton is Ottawa's mayor, Jim Watson, who studied what was known at the time as mass communications. So he studied mass communications and now he's the mayor of Ottawa. And that just goes to show you that, you know, you might be looking at someone in a certain role and think, oh, well, they must have studied this or they would have had to take this path to get to this destination. But, you know, someone like um, Jim Watson, 
he didn't study something like political science. He studied mass communications. So you can see that not all paths are linear or they're not all what you what you might think they would be. And another example of this is someone who I actually know personally, um, my friend Chad from university. He was in uh, he studied in the Sprott School of Business in the uh, Bachelor of Commerce. So he got a Bachelor of Commerce with a concentration in finance. And now a lot of people might think, OK, well, if I'm studying finance, then I'll probably end up working in, you know, in the corporate world uh, in, in something to do with finance. But now he's actually working for the RCMP in the um, in the financial uh, crime unit uh, as a fraud investigator. So he's still using his degree and he's using the knowledge that he gained while at Carleton, but he took a different path and now he's working in law enforcement. So those examples just go to show you that people take different pathways. I also want to talk a little bit about my own personal experience right here. So when I went to university or when I was in grade 12, I knew I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. You know, I didn't know what the end goal was, but I did know that I absolutely loved law and I loved crime. So when I was in grade 11 and 12, I took uh, some law classes and I loved them. And so that's sort of what drew me to Carleton's criminology program. It seemed like, you know, it ignited my passion. I was very excited about it. And the fact that I really loved my law classes in high school um, pointed me towards uh, going to law school. So I was thinking that I might want to go to law school and be a criminal defense lawyer. That was what I was thinking at the time. Now, obviously, I'm sitting in front of you today as a recruitment officer at Carleton and I am not in law school. And that just goes to show you that people's paths change and that's OK. So when I was in third year and fourth year, I was working in residence at Carleton and a lot of my role in residence was to be a peer mentor to other students, to first year students and second year students. And that's when I really realized that I had a passion for working with people. I had a passion for working within education and being a mentor and, and relationship building. And so that sort of drew me away from law school. Um, and it and lots of people I know in criminology went to, went to law school or are in law school now, which is great. Um, but my path changed and different doors opened opportunities that I didn't even know were there. Um, so it just goes to show you that, you know, everyone's path is different and it's OK to sort of go in a direction that you might not necessarily have um, thought would be for you. So how I was able to discover that I had a passion for education and working with um, other people is through a work opportunity. And at Carleton, we offer a ton of different work opportunities for students. So these can take um, these can be in the form of internships, practicums, placements uh, or co-op. And now we really like to talk to students about co-op because co-op is such a good opportunity for students to get full time work in the field of that they're studying. So uh, with co-op, it's typically uh, uh, full time paid work and you're getting that experience that hands on real life experience in the area that it is you're studying. It gives you a really, really good opportunity to network and to make connections and oftentimes students actually get a full time job offer for when they're done or for when after they graduate. So it's a really good stepping stone to build that, you know, that first part of your career for right after graduation. And now the same thing can go with internships and placements and practicums with these. They are typically um, not paid. Well, some of them some of them can be paid. Sometimes they're not paid. Sometimes they're for credit instead of um, making money and uh, they can also be part time rather than full time. But either way, they are such good opportunities to do that networking and to make those connections and to build that first stepping stone when you're in university so that when you graduate, um, you know, you have a window of opportunities and you have those doors open for you to get out there into the working world. And then, of course, uh, it, it's a huge bonus is that you get to experience what it is you're studying and you get to go out into that field and you get to really learn is this what I want to do? Can you see yourself being in this position or in this sort of role for the next, you know, 10, 20 years? Um, so it really gets to it gets students thinking about what exactly it is um, that they want. And then it also sets students apart. So after you graduate, those employers that you're interviewing uh, with or, you know, looking to apply to, they're going to look back at your experiences and see what sets you apart from everyone else. So we really, really like to emphasize and encourage students um, to take advantage of all of these work opportunities as they are really, really good building blocks for your career. And now 
when we talk about, you know, when we talk about opportunities, we always like to talk about opportunities in Ottawa. So being in the capital city of Canada, we have a whole array of opportunities that you would not be able to find anywhere else in the country. We have, you know, Parliament Hill is right here in our backyard. Uh, as a criminology student, I loved that we had the Supreme Court of Canada right here in our city. It gave me so many opportunities to go and view high profile cases that I would not have gotten to do in any other city. And we also like to emphasize that there are so many government opportunities. You know, there's there's um, there's ways for students to get in with the government, to get employment experience with the government, which is always a great thing to have. But sometimes we don't go into detail about what that means. And you might be thinking, OK, well, you know, you're saying I can work for the government or I can do this, but what does that actually mean? So here is just one short list of all of, uh, you know, Canada's government agencies that students have the ability um, to get employment with. So you'll see here there's things like Statistics Canada, uh, Parks Canada, Environment and Climate Change Canada, Health Canada. And so you might be thinking, OK, well, do I need to study something like political science in order to work for the government? Or do I need to study things, something like, you know, global and international studies to work uh, with the government? And the answer is no. The government needs people with all sorts of backgrounds. So I'm going to highlight this by talking a little bit about Health Canada. As you all know, um, or you definitely should know by now, we are in the midst of a global pandemic. So some of you may have seen commercials coming on TV. I know that when I watch TV um, or when I have the news on, I'll see ads coming through. And a lot of the ads that I'm seeing today are from Health Canada or from the government of Ontario, um, you know, advertising to people and telling people to stay home. And you've probably seen some of these too. Maybe they've popped up on your iPhone when you're scrolling through Instagram, or maybe you've heard them on the radio. Now, these people who are working for Health Canada and who are creating these ads don't necessarily have a health sciences background, as you might think they would need, or you know, a bachelor of science background, as you think they might need. These people will have com um, communications backgrounds. They'll have backgrounds in media, uh, uh, you know, design. We we need people from media production and design to help create those things. Marketing as well. So you know, the government needs people from all different areas. Every every part of the government needs uh, a human resource a re human resource department. So just because you're looking at something and you think, OK, well, I think that um, something like Health Canada, I think if you're thinking that they only take people with a certain background, you might want to think again and do some research because every organization needs people with a whole um, a wide variety of backgrounds. And another prime example of this is Shopify. So this is just one example, but my colleague and I, we went on to Shopify's website and we looked up their careers page. And so as you can see right here on the screen, these are a list of careers that Shopify is hiring for. And so a lot of people when they think about Shopify think, by the way, I guess I should explain Shopify first. Shopify is an e-commerce platform. So it's what uh, Kylie Jenner uses to sell her makeup uh, products. It's what Elon Musk uses to sell his Teslas. So it's what a lot of stores or online businesses will use to sell their products uh, or their services. So a lot of people think, OK, well, they're probably hiring engineers or they're probably hiring uh, computer science students, which they do they, like this. This company needs people with those backgrounds, but it's not. This company is not only looking for people with computer science backgrounds and engineering backgrounds. As you can see here, clearly they're looking for someone uh, with HR experience. HR and culture is one uh, position that they're looking to hire. Marketing and communications. So someone who has a communications background, someone who maybe is coming from a Bachelor of Commerce. Uh, business operations, legal and finance. So someone who has that law and legal background. There's lots of different um, backgrounds and lots of different experiences that all companies are looking for. So if you're really interested in one certain company or or you know you there's um, sort of a, a an area that you want to work in. One of them here in Ottawa is we call it the Silicon Valley of the North. There's an area of Ottawa which is a high tech industry um, and a lot of people you know seek to, to work in those jobs because they are great jobs and you don't necessarily need to have a tech background. So we encourage you to go and look up these companies and see what kind of positions they're looking for and maybe how you can get yourself into those positions. 
Now, you will already be developing your skills right now while you're learning and, and maybe some of you have part time jobs, but we want to really draw your attention to the skills that you will likely develop when you get to university. And we want to emphasize about being intentional. So there's a lot of skills that you will be will be developing now already, and then there's a lot of skills that you will probably start thinking about and start developing once you get to university. So when you get to university, you're going to be sitting in lectures. You're going to be um, you know, responsible for your time. Time management is a huge one that I had to learn. Uh, research and planning skills can include things obviously like research in your classes, um, planning, working in a team, uh, creating a, a collaborative project with your peers, giving a presentation with your peers. And then there's also a lot of skills that you will be using and that you will be learning outside of the classroom, such as people skills, thinking skills and personal skills. I know that um, some of the, the big skills that I learned and developed and continue to learn uh, today is when I lived in residence. So I came from a relatively small city, uh, Guelph, Ontario. So that's six hours away from Ottawa. So I ended up living in residence, which was a great experience. I loved it. And I had a roommate. So that was the first time ever that I had to share a room with someone. So, you know, I had to learn all these new skills that I had never really had to develop before. I had to learn about, you know, respect and communication um, and boundary setting and making sure that both of us were living cohesively and that the other person was getting what they wanted and what they needed, which really helped to build those skills for me. I was also able to develop a lot of leadership skills uh, through um, participating in different clubs and societies, as well as being a competitive athlete while I was studying at Carleton. And something at Carleton that we really pride ourselves on and that we we really we really focus on and we want our students to develop is our intercultural awareness. So Carleton is such a diverse school. We have students who represent over 150 countries from across the world. So we're always making sure that we're creating a safe and inclusive environment for everyone. And so that is one um, skill that you will let you will really work on and that you will really develop uh, once you get to Carleton. And we're very proud of that. So that's intercultural awareness. And you can really start to think about developing that skill now in, in everything that you do today. Now, a really useful website that you might want to take a look at at pathways is pathways.carleton.ca. And I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation um, that you know some of you might know exactly what it is you want to do. Maybe you're sitting here thinking, I know that I want to go to med school. I know that I want to be a doctor. Or maybe you're thinking, I know that I want to be a teacher. Or I know that I want to be um, a marketing specialist. And that's awesome. And you know you might know the exact path that you want to take to get there. Um, and some of you might know that you want to work in the corporate world, but you don't necessarily know you know how you're going to get there or what path you're going to take. And this website is really useful and is a great resource for you to have a look and see the different paths that you can take. Now, on the other hand, you might be sitting here thinking, OK, I have no idea what I want to be doing in 10 years from now, but I know that I am really passionate about psychology or I am really passionate about English literature or maybe you're really passionate uh, about storytelling or something along those lines, but you don't know where it's going to lead you after. Again, this website is super helpful. You can have a look at it. Uh, you can see um, our different programs and then you can see what our graduates are currently up to, as well as the career opportunities that are available to you if you choose to go this path or if you choose to study this specific program. So definitely check out pathways.carleton.ca. And then of course, we always encourage uh, every uh, potential or future Raven um, to register for Carleton 360 and to request a view book. So you can go to 360.carleton.ca. Uh, you can let us know what programs you're interested in. Uh, it's a very customizable hub, so we'll send you information that we think is really relevant and important to you. It's a way for you to stay connected with us. And then you can requ request that we send you a view book. So um, normally we have a ton of view, view books on hand every year. This year is obviously very different, but we're still mailing out view books so that students can really take a deep dive uh, into all of our programs. I know that I love uh, having the physical book. I actually have it right here with me um, and I love having the physical copy so that I'm not always reading from a screen, but this has a lot of information about all of our programs and all of our student supports and services, our scholarships and residents. So I definitely recommend that you go to Carlton 360 and request that we mail you a view book. Just note that we are actually um, we're, while we're taking requests for view books, we're just waiting until the provincial lockdown ends until we actually send them out. But rest assured you will get one if you request one. And then a bonus, 
if you request a view book is that you could receive some really awesome Raven swag. So we might send you a swag box uh, or some cool Ravens hoodies in the mail. So I just want to thank everyone so much for joining us today um, at this Your Career, Your Future presentation. I hope that it was really helpful and that you started um, to think about, you know, building those first stepping stones into your career. This is a very exciting time for you as you choose what you want to study um, and you start your future. And we are so excited that you've chosen us to, to go on this journey with you. Uh, we really want you to stay connected with us on our social media channels, such as Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, and if you ever have any questions, you can email us at admissions.carlton.ca and we will stick around for a few minutes um, to answer any questions that you may have uh, left if you want to type those into the Q&A. So thank you everyone for joining us and I will see you very soon.